We're now going to take a look at how you would multiply two binomials together. So I'm going to begin with my algebra tiles. I'm going to take one of these factors, x plus 3, and we're going to put it along the length of the rectangle. I'm going to take the other factor, x plus 2, and we're going to put it along the width or the height of the rectangle. And then we're looking for the algebra tiles that will fill in that rectangle. So what piece has a length of x and a height of x? We know what's going to be positive times positive, so this is going to also be positive. So we can go ahead and fill this in, what piece has a length of one unit times a height of x, etc. And then when we're done, we can see that we end up with 1x squared, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 positive x's, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 little ones. So when we multiply the x's together, x times x gives us that 1x squared. When we multiply the x times the 2 together, you can see that the x times the two ones will give us two of those x's. When we multiply the 3 times the x together, these three little ones times this 1x give us three x's, and these x's are like terms. So we can go ahead and combine those together into five x's. And then when we multiply the little ones together, 2 times 3 is going to give us six of the little ones. Every term is getting multiplied by every other term and then we're gathering together the like terms. The process that we can use to make sure that we remember to multiply every term by every other term is FOIL. It's an acronym. The F stands for the first term. So if we take a look at the binomial, we're going to multiply the first term in that binomial by the first term in that binomial. O stands for the outside term. So if you think of this as a house, this little x and this 2 are on the outside wall. So we're going to multiply those two together. Then the I stands for the inside terms. So these are the terms, if you think about your house again, these are the inside walls. These two terms are nice and cozy. You're going to multiply those together. And then L is the last term in each bracket. So we're going to multiply the last term in this bracket by the last term in this bracket. And if we go first outside, inside, last, we're going to make sure that we multiply every term by every other term, and then we can go ahead and combine any like terms that we may have. All right, so we're going to try a few examples here. So we can see that we have two binomials and they're multiplied together. So we're going to multiply the first terms together, x times x gives us that x squared, and then we're going to multiply the outside, so x times 6, x times 6 gives us 6x, the inside, 4 times x, gives us that 4x. And then the last term in each bracket, 4 times 6, gives us that 24. Check to see if we have any like terms here. We can see that these are like terms, so we're going to combine those together. 6x plus 4x is 10x. We have 1x squared, and we have 24 of the little ones. And then over here, again, we're going to do first terms. c times c is c squared. And then outside, c times 5 is 5c. Inside 2 times c is that 2c, and the last terms 2 times 5 is that 10. Check to see do we have any like terms. We can see that we have 5c plus 2c. They add together to give us 7c, and this is our simplified answer. In our next two, we can see again we have a binomial times a binomial. So we're going to multiply x times x is x squared, and then minus 7x plus 3x minus 21. So we can go ahead and write that out, check for any like terms, combine your like terms together, and it's fully simplified when there are no more like terms. So again, we're going to go y times y is y squared, negative 3y, minus 4y, and then a negative times a negative is a positive 12, and then combine any like terms together that you can see. Now in our next few, we're going to try to speed this process up a little bit. So I'm going to go 2a times 4a is 8a squared, and then I can see that I'm going to have 2a times 1 is 2a, and then 5 times 4a is 20a. So I'm going to combine those in my head. I'm going to go 2a plus 20a is 22a, and then 5 times 1 is 5. So I can eliminate that middle step if I've got the hang of this, and we can just go straight to the simplified answer. Now, accuracy is most important, so if you need to write that out in the beginning, go for it. But as you practice and practice, you're going to be able to go from here right to here. So again, we're going to go 3x times 2x. I know that's 6x squared, and then I'm going to go mentally. I've got 9x minus 8x is 1x, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, and that gives us our trinomial. 
when we see something like this, we know that we have the base times itself two times. So we can even go ahead and write it out like this. This is what we call a binomial squared. So when we FOIL this out, we're gonna have x times x is x squared. And then we're gonna have negative two x minus two x gives us negative four x. And then a negative two times a negative two is a positive four. So the quick way that we can do this when we square a binomial is we can say, because we're going to have always this bracket times itself, we can say we're going to take the first term and square it. This times this gives us this squared. We're going to then multiply x times negative two, and then we're gonna have negative two times x. So always negative two x and negative two x. The outside and the inside products will be the same. So we can take the product of these terms, negative two times x is negative two x, double it, and that gives us the negative four x. And then we always know that we're going to have the last term times itself. So negative two times negative two is positive four. So the quick way when we see a binomial is we're gonna square the first term, x squared. We're gonna double the product. So negative two times x is negative two x, double that, multiply by two to get negative four x, and then square the last term, positive four. This one over here is not a binomial squared. Here we have the exact same thing in the brackets. Here we have the same terms, but we have a different sign. One is a plus, one is a minus. So this is what we call conjugates. We have the same terms, but one is a plus, one is a minus. So when we go to do this one, we're gonna have 5D times 5D is 25D squared, and then we're gonna have negative 15D plus 15D, and then negative nine. And then when we combine our like terms, negative 15D plus 15D leaves us with zero D. There's no D left. So we're left with 25d squared minus 9. So this is a binomial squared. This is what we call conjugates. The outside product and the inside product will end up canceling each other out. Now in this one here, we can see that we're going to have x times c, which is just xc, and then we're going to have negative 3x plus 8c minus 24. So we have no like terms that we can combine. We have four separate terms. That's as simplified as we're going to get. And then what about this one? Could you pause the video and see if you can do that on your own? And I want to see if you caught, we are no longer multiplying two binomials, we are now subtracting two binomials. So if we are subtracting, we're going to begin by distributing that negative one into that second bracket there. So you have to be careful. FOIL works if we're multiplying two binomials. If we are subtracting, we're gonna go back to what you did in grade nine. So we're gonna begin by getting rid of those brackets, distribute this in, we have a negative one times five X is negative five X negative one times positive one is negative one. And then take a look to see, do we have any like terms? So we have a two X and we have a five X. And then we also have two constant terms, negative five and negative one. Two X minus five X is negative three X. Negative five minus one is negative six. This is now simplified. We have no like terms. Now, if we happen to be multiplying two binomials together and there's more than one variable within the brackets, no problem, we're still gonna FOIL. So A times a is still a squared. We're going to have a times 7b is 7ab. Now the order in which you multiply doesn't matter. I tend to line them up alphabetically. And then the same thing here, we're going to have 5b times a is the same as just 5 times a times b or 5ab. And then the last term 5b times 7b is that 35b squared. So now we can see that 7ab plus 5ab, those are like terms. So even if you wrote this as a7b, although we would put the numerical coefficient in front. So if you wrote this as 7ba and 5ab, whichever order the variables are in, you need to recognize these are like terms. Same variables, same exponents on the variables. All right, same thing here. So we're gonna go 2x times 3x is that 6x squared, and then 2x times y, 2xy, negative y times 3x. Again, I would line them up alphabetically. So we have that negative 3xy, negative 3xy, and then a negative times a positive is a negative, y times y is y squared. Make sure that you combine any like terms, and then we can see here that positive two minus three is that negative one xy, and then similar on the last one, we're going to have x squared, and then minus four xy, minus two xy, those combine together to get that minus six xy, and then our last term, negative two y times negative four y becomes positive eight y squared.
Now, if we're going to multiply a binomial times a trinomial, the same concept applies in the fact that we're going to multiply every term by every other term. So the easiest way to go about this is to take the first term in the binomial and multiply it through the trinomial, and then take the second term in the binomial and multiply that term through the trinomial. So we're going to start by going x times 2x squared, and that's going to give us 2x cubed, x times negative 5x is going to give us negative 5x squared, and then x times 1 is that 1x. Then we're going to take this 2, 2 times 2x squared is going to give 4x squared, 2 times negative 5x is negative 10x, and then 2 times 1 is 2. And then you can go through and check for any like terms, combine the like terms together, and this is our simplified polynomial. And here's another strategy for you. We're going to take this first term and we're going to multiply it through. So we have a times a squared is going to give us a cubed. a times 2ab gives us 2a squared b. And then a times b squared is just ab squared. And then when I multiply this second term through, I can see that I'm going to have several like terms here. So negative b times a squared, that's going to be, if I put the variables in alphabetical order, negative a squared b. I can see that I already have an a squared b here. So I'm going to take that negative a squared b and I'm going to line it up underneath this term. And I'm going to continue that process. So now negative b times 2ab, I can see a and b times b will give us that ab squared, so I'm going to line that up under my ab squared term, and then we're going to have a negative b times a positive b squared gives me a negative b cubed. I'm then going to go through and add those two together. So we have a cubed, and there is no other a cubed, so that's just going to stay as a cubed. 2 minus 1 leaves us with 1, and again a squared b, we have that a squared b. 1 plus negative 2 is negative 1, ab squared, and this is our only b cubed, so we have negative b cubed there. And the final thing that we're going to look at in this lesson is if we have multiple operations on polynomials. So in this case, we have 2 times 3a plus 1 times a plus 2. So the easiest way to do this is to take your two binomials and to multiply them together first. We're going to FOIL those together, and I'm just going to bring down that 2. So we're going to have 3a times a, 3a squared. 6a plus 1a is 7a, and then 1 times 2 is 2. If you choose to do the outside and the inside, first, that's okay, but just make sure you combine those terms before we distribute that 2 in. So we're now going to distribute that in, check for any like terms, and there are none. So in this case, we have our final answer. So now you can see that we have subtraction as well as multiplication. So order of operations, think bed mass. We're going to multiply before we deal with the subtraction piece. So I'm just going to bring this 5 down, and I'm also going to bring down this negative 3. I'm going to begin the same way. We want to FOIL those together first of all. And then when we do that, we're going to distribute this negative 3 into the brackets to get rid of those brackets. And then we're going to check for any like terms here. And we can see that we have a 5 and we have an 84. So we can combine those together and get our simplified polynomial. So anytime we're asked to simplify, we have to remove the brackets and then combine all of our like terms together. So we can see that we're going to multiply two binomials together. We're going to begin by foiling those out. We're also multiplying multiplying a 3 times 2 binomials. So I would begin with the binomials first. So we're going to FOIL those out, bring this 3 down, and then we're going to distribute that 3 in to get rid of those brackets. Take a look. Do we have any like terms? And then you can combine those together. Same thing here. I would FOIL these out first. Then you're going to distribute that 3 in to get rid of those brackets. Now, here we have a binomial squared. So do you remember our little trick to do this quickly? Square the first term. So 3y squared becomes 9y squared. Double the product. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15 times 2 gives us that negative 30y. Square the last term, negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. And then remember, we also have a negative sign. This is really a negative 1. You can think of it like that. We're going to distribute that in the brackets. So a negative 1 times a positive 9 is a negative 9. Negative times a negative is a positive negative times a positive is a negative, and then go through and combine your like terms together.